Well, thank you for staying tuned. I am Randy Weiss, and I promised a, a scripture verse before we went to break. I love this. I hope you love it, too. Uh, the, the truth is you need to love this. If you fail to love this, you are messed up. <laughs> Who is a God like unto thee that pardons iniquity? I'm smiling, not over the iniquity, but over the pardon and passes by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. Remnant. I'm part of the remnant. You could be part of that remnant too. He retains not his anger forever. He's angry, but he can be pacified. He won't hold that anger forever. I mean, unless you insist because he delights in mercy. Do you delight in mercy? Or do you reject mercy? I delight in mercy and I hope you will. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities. I love that. He will subdue our iniquities. Our iniquities do not have to control us. We do not have to be dominated by the sins that would destroy and wreck every good thing that God would have for us. He will subdue our iniquities and thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. You know, when our sins are at the bottom of the ocean, you don't see them. But the only way they get to the bottom of that ocean, baby, is through the cross. You just have to deal with it. I'm sorry if I'm too Christian for you. I'm sorry if I'm not Jewish enough for you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry not because of those things, though. I'm sorry because I'm a sinner, but I'm grateful because I'm saved by grace. But there's a promise here that I will simply not allow anyone in my hearing to ignore. Thou wilt perform the truth to Jacob. Jacob was a man. God changed his name to Israel. This is just as well said. Thou wilt perform the truth to Israel. I don't care if you like it or not. It's what it says. And the mercy to Abraham, Avraham. I am Avraham, ben Moshe Aaron, ben David. I am Abraham, son of Moses Aaron, son of David. I have a heritage. Lador Vador, from generation to generation. There's an unending heritage that goes all the way back to Abraham. God made promises to my forefather and you can't take it away. Thou wilt perform the truth to Jacob and the mercy to Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. God's promises are real and they're unchanging and they're dependable and therefore the Gentiles can trust in my Jewish Messiah. And I want to now fulfill my promise and introduce you to my Jewish friend, Jeffrey D. Miller. Shalom, Randy. Shalom, shalom. Welcome to Crosstalk, and uh, glad you're here, man. Hallelujah. Great to be here. Lador Vador, generation to generation, that the people who want to say that the promises to the Jews have, have ended because the Jews rejected our Messiah, which incidentally they never did. Many did, not all of them, obviously. Yeah. Some did, some didn't. That's We're it. living proof that they all have it. Hallelujah. <laughs> But that generation to generation is the faithfulness of God and His promises, not only in the Hebrew liturgy, like the prayer you prayed, which of course was based on Scripture, or that section of Micah that you read, but also it's His character. God's loving, merciful character, His grace and mercy have been from the beginning, yes. not just since Messiah. God is not a grace of mercy in the New Covenant and in the Tanakh, the Hebrew Scriptures, a God of vengeance. He's still a God of vengeance, and He's still a God of grace and mercy, and He always was, and He always will be, because He's from generation to generation the same, yesterday, today, and forever. The God of the Jews 
and, and the God of Messiah and the God of Christians is the same God who's never changed. For someone to worship some other God, they have to pick a false God because the true God, the God of the Bible, the God of Israel, the God of creation, the one true God. Ki le'olam chazdo. His mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. <laughs> forever. That's right. So his merciful nature has been from the beginning and it still is today. And in that mercy... He promised to subdue our iniquities, as you read there. Subdue our iniquities. I know that, that's a hot button for you, <laughs> and it's a hot button for me because we've all f sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that would be Christian, Jew, Gentile, in between, whatever. We all do. And without His subduing our iniquities by the blood of Jesus and our faith in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, they don't get subdued. They were subdued by the ultimate perfect sacrifice at the cross. You know, iniquities uh, hold fallen people. Iniquity, we're all fallen, mm -hmm. but iniquities don't have to hold us. Iniquities, I can tell you in my life, there was a time where I had to be drunk, stoned, or tripping. Mm -hmm. It was just necessary. Every day, I mean, if I, there was a period in my life where I, I used cocaine constantly. I'm, I'm embarrassed to say wow. this, but constantly. It was, I was perpetually out of control. Mm -hmm. There was no way to go on living the way I was living. And I got to tell you, one day I read a book and it had some information about this Messiah in it. And I said a prayer and I was instantaneously oh, delivered. Wow. My iniquities were subdued. I was in a moment delivered. Mm -hmm. Never to go back. Now, that's not to say there hasn't been temptation, but I don't have to go back. That's right. Because God is bigger and able to subdue any wicked habit. Our God is able. Hallelujah. We have viewers who are hearing the words that we're saying, and they're looking at themselves saying, wow, those guys are my sugar. <laughs> they're crazy Jewish people. But we're nothing more than crazy for the Lord. Amen. Yeah, I never smoked, drank, or used drugs. My story's entirely different, but I, I was blaspheming God with the best of them because I was a total atheist. And that darkness though it's not as physically addictive and, and, and destructive as what you were doing with your life, incidentally, oy vey. <laughs> but, but, but I was being destroyed from within by my atheism, and I was trying to affect other people the same way. I was trying to bring my darkness to others, thinking it was the right thing, and one touch from God, and my life was changed too, and my iniquities were subdued one touch from God, and all it takes is one touch from God. He's waiting to touch everyone, Jew and Gentile alike. He's waiting, he's waiting for us to say, yes, yes. The sin that so easily binds sinners, mm -hmm. really, is unbelief. Yes. And belief alters everything. That's right. We're going to need to take a break, but when we return, I would like you to help those Jewish people that may be watching understand some of the dynamics at play in being a Jewish man who believes in a Jewish Messiah. And I hope we can also help some of the Christian folks who may be viewing, who care about the Jewish people, for them to have a better understanding of how they can be a credible Christian witness. Because that's what's often lacking, credibility in the witness of a Christian. 